I began to, to feel this sense that there was a moment of invitation for Canada. Where the world is going, and I think where the post-COVID world is going, is what we're seeing currently is we're seeing countries do well who are small to medium sized, who are well run, and who actually have good healthcare, governance works at the end of the day, um, can form a cohesive sort of national vision for people to rally behind at moments of crisis. And countries like mine and yours are actually doing well in this new reality. We are about to see, I believe, and Parag Khanna, who I read a lot at the moment, who's an expert on globalization, says you're going to see a global talent drain away from places like London and Paris and New York towards places like Auckland and Vancouver and Melbourne. And, you know, these places, these smaller cities who can actually protect people. Um, there could be a moment coming. And in a sense, the Canadian church finds itself in a really interesting country, which has, in many ways, the multiculturalism and diversity that the future will hold as the world gets more multicultural and diverse. That's been part of Canada's vision for a long time, that sort of post-national vision. Canada also has a really interesting quirk, which is regionalism. And uh, it has different provinces and it has some of the tensions of how do you ha hold that all together? The Canadian railway sort of being this, this thing in the past which would hold these disparate parts of the country together. But it's interesting, again, to Parag Kenner, he says that what's happening is COVID-19 is creating a regionalized world. He actually said the regionalization is the new globalization. Mm. Um, I'm in a weird position at the moment where our, our equivalent of provinces, our states, I can't enter into some of them. Tasmania below me, which I could fly to in 40 minutes, I can't enter there without being, um, you know, fly south from Melbourne without quarantining for 14 days. The border of Western Australia is cut off. The border of Queensland is cut off. Australia has gone back to these regions. So fascinating. Um, and so Canada's experience of having these different regional realities gives the church this fascinating dynamic of understanding different cultures all in the one country. Um, the sort of post-Catholic quiet revolution story of Quebec is a <laughs> fascinating challenge, which the church can learn for, which is this fascinating European Lassite sort of secularism in the midst of another country. What a fascinating advantage you guys have to see what church planting looks like in that place. You've got the sort of Pacific Northwest, Cascadia, um, Vancouver, you know, in, in British Columbia, which has its own unique sort of culture, which is again, an incredible laboratory that God's actually doing something in, which is also mm. a hub city to the Pacific and Asia. And many people who may feel reticent in other countries around perhaps hard power of the United States feel drawn to the soft power of Canada. Um, you've also got this East Coast reality of Toronto and Ontario. You've got this fascinating Alberta um, petro-nationalism dynamic going on. For what I'm saying here, it's all happening in Canada. And what if God is using you guys as a laboratory? You've got these little experiments of different things where different plants and different ministries can begin all in one country, but still with this cohesive national reality. You've got this interesting sort of um, progressive sort of post-Christian thing, but then you've also got this really interesting right-wing resurgence. I don't know if anyone in Canada has noticed this, but how fascinating was it that in the whole sort of culture wars that have just happened, even in the United States general election in 2016, you had all these people who blew up on the internet who were boosters for the Trump campaign, despite what Canada may see itself as more to the left of the United States. You had all these people, Lauren Southern and, and Stephen Molyneux, and all these people all of a sudden were speaking into that who were Canadians, and, and then the whole Jordan Peterson phenomenon. So in a sense, what does Canada have? Canada has everything going on. What if Canada actually looks more like the future? Mm. And you guys just haven't realized that. And what if there's an opportunity which is less about going down south of the border, but what if there's a moment where God wants to keep this? I mean, in a sense, we've gone back to our households during this time of COVID-19, but also we're going back to our countries. And I actually believe that God is going to use Canada as a kind of laboratory mm -hmm. for new forms of how do we reach this emerging world? And increasingly people will look to Canada of what you guys are going to learn in the next season as a place of inspiration, not Canadians going elsewhere to find inspiration.
Um, mm -hmm. and, and lastly, I guess my last thing is, there is a humility. That is an incredible gift I see in Canadian leaders. There is a quietness and a listening that I appreciate so much. And I think that the posture of many Canadians to actually sit and listen is such a powerful kingdom thing for Canadian leaders and to actually model a new kind of leadership.